Sports. Sports are very much a part of American culture. We gain a lot from sports such as keeping our bodies healthy and fit. We can learn a great deal from sports that we can apply to other areas of our lives such as the value of discipline and teamwork. In fact, there are many principles that govern sports that are very similar to the principles that govern our lives as Christians in our spiritual lives. So here's five that intersect. Discipline. Athletes must discipline themselves in order to compete in sports. Without the discipline of training their bodies, athletes will not have the strength, coordination, or stamina to compete. Athletes will not realize the goal of their sport. They will not win. Well, the same holds true for us as Christians. We are engaged in a competition throughout our lives for our souls. A game that will result in either us winning, getting into heaven, or us losing, finding ourselves in hell. And there is an opponent who wants us to lose, the enemy of God and our enemy, the devil. But we have a team that can help us win and a leader that can get us there. If we discipline not just our souls in the spiritual life, but also our bodies, keeping them temperate, our hearts, what we set them upon, our minds, what we think about, what we ponder, what we muse with, we will have the strength, the coordination, the stamina to compete in this game of life that will result in us being on the winning team and remaining active on it and reaching the goal of heaven. Persistence. Athletes, when they train, they must train regularly, not just occasionally. To fail in persistent training not only jeopardizes good performance, but also risk injury and leads not only to the athlete being taken out of the competition, but the team also being taken out of the competition, being able to win the game too because the absence of so many injured athletes. So too for us as Christians. We cannot expect much progress with on again, off again training in the spiritual life. The lack of lifelong, consistent training in the Christian faith not only jeopardizes individual Christians from being able to perform well in the spiritual life, but also risk injury, meaning sin. And these same sins, injuries, will not only take individual Christians out of the most important competition in their lives, they will contribute to their team, the church, not being able to compete too, since so many Christians have been taken out by their injuries. Without the persistent discipline of a life of prayer, scripture, the sacraments, and moral virtuous living, Christians not only stunt their progress in the spiritual life, but they also risk injury to themselves and to others. Rules. Every sport has rules that we know must be accepted and followed. Athletes are not free to reinvent the game. They must play by the rules or risk exclusion and or disqual disqualification. So too Christians must play by the rules. And rules not set by some national association of human beings, but by God, the creator of the universe and the Lord of heaven and earth and the one who created us in his image and likeness, and the one, therefore, who actually knows the rules we need to follow for us to win our lifelong competition and gain the crown of glory in heaven. If we're going to be on the winning team and secure the victory, we have to abide by the rules. To refuse this is to risk being disqualified and never realize the goal of human existence, which is to be with God forever. 
We are not free to reinvent Christianity as so many try to do today. There's only one playing field, one game, and one set of rules. Play the game on God's turf with his rules and you are guaranteed, guaranteed to win the game. And so if you're willing to follow the rules in your sports or demand that of your kids that they follow the rules and everything that the coach says and jump when he or she says jump, why are we not doing this with our Christian faith for ourselves and our children? Far more is at risk than winning the game here. Alert in injury. Being alert for injury. Good athletes listen carefully to their bodies and watch for any sign of injury. If athletes detect an injury, then they see the team doctor and take good measures to heal as quickly as possible so that they can get back into competition as effective competitors and contribute to the team winning. Athletes also avoid injury by putting into place preventative routines such as stretching. So too for us as Christians. We must monitor ourselves daily for injury which comes through sin. Upon discovering even minor injuries, we should consult our team physician our, or athletic director or physical therapist, a pastor, a youth minister, a spiritual director, anyone who can help us heal in the Christian life. Then get on the men quickly rather than allow injuries, sins, to continue for years in our lives without healing. Further, we should try to avoid injury by learning and putting into place preventative measures to avoid temptations to sin and moral injury. Teamwork. Many sports involve a group of athletes working together toward the common goal of winning. Athletes cannot merely seek glory for themselves. They must have the good of the whole team in mind. They must learn to work with others for the common good and overcome any idiosyncrasies and selfishness that can hinder the achievement of the goal of the team. So too, for us as Christians, we as Christians must strive to overcome selfish egotism and the terrible pride that comes with a rugged individualism, thinking that we can go it alone in the competition for our souls. Likewise, Christians need to see that what they do or don't do in the game will dramatically affect their fellow teammates, other Christians striving for the win. Then work for the common good, learning to appreciate the gifts of others and increase their own spiritual skills and experiences for the good of others, not just for themselves. The team is stronger than the individual alone. Life is more about, more than just about me, both in sports and most especially in the Christian life. God has given us a team, like here at St. Francis, one another as Christians. And then we should be doing everything possible to make sure we contribute to the win of the team while allowing others on the team to help us also cross the finish line. In today's gospel reading from Mark 9, Jesus gives us some really excellent but hard directives about how to get into heaven. This is what he says. He says, if your hand or foot or eye is causing you to sin, then cut it off. Pluck them out. Better for you to enter into the kingdom of heaven with one hand, one foot, or one eye than to enter into the kingdom of hell with both of them. Amen to that. Jesus may not be literally telling us 
to cut off a hand, foot, or eye that is causing us to sin. But Jesus is offering us a graphic image that he hopes causes us to wake up and acknowledge that in the spiritual life, we will have to make certain sacrifices in order to get into heaven. So are we willing to hold on to that sin, whatever that sin is, or that lifestyle, or that way of living, that you know that's in each one of our lives, you know it about yourself, because we want it now. So we get it now, but then we're not willing to let it go, and we don't get into heaven. But we go to hell with what we lived with for here and now. Is that what we want? Like in our sports, we must be willing to make the spiritual sacrifices of discipline, persistency, following God's rules, paying attention to injuries and Christian teamwork in order to gain the ultimate victory of heaven. The very sacrifices we are more than willing to make in our sports and willing to make sure our kids do in their sports, in order to stretch ourselves or them, better ourselves, increase our self-esteem, form friendships, perform well, and be victorious, all good things. How much more willing should we be to sacrifice in order to get ourselves into heaven and our children into heaven and to help everyone else on our team win heaven too? Listen. If what I'm saying here actually makes sense, then shouldn't we be following these principles? These principles that we apply to ourselves and we demand of our children in order for them to be successful in sports. And we listen to our coaches about. Shouldn't we be applying them to the area of our lives which is most important? I'm not saying that isn't important. We can learn a lot from sports, including this stuff. Shouldn't we be applying to the most important area of our lives, our spiritual lives? So join us here at St. Francis. Join our team. And the many opportunities we have to work together as a team to grow the spiritual life, to pay attention to past injuries and bring them to the divine physician, Jesus, for healing Follow the rules of the life that Christ has offered us so that we can achieve the victory of heaven. Be willing to discipline our, not just our, our souls, but our minds and our hearts and our bodies. Train them in the ways of the Christian faith and be consistent in living out your faith in Jesus Christ rather than on again, off again. Be persistent in your prayer life the reception of the sacraments, relationship with other Christians, reading the Bible, and a lifestyle in sync with the heart of the God who is calling you to win in this life so you can achieve the glory of heaven in the eternal life and take as many of your teammates with you as possible.